Okay, I think we're live. Audio and video is up. Sorry for being late. Um, as I mentioned in the email, we had our capstone presentations today. We have the first of two sections and everything went well. We had some uh, network connectivity issues. I mean, you know, you know, teams and, and whatnot. So we got a little delayed, uh, but, uh, but we just finished five presentations back to back. Um, I told the, the groups if, if they had to dress up, then I had to dress up as well. Plus, you know, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but this is officially the best necktie ever because this is a necktie that has bridges on it. So, of course, you know, had to wear that today. Um, <laughs> um, today, we're going to talk about the exam review, and I want to get right into the material because I want to have as much time as possible for questions. Um, uh, give me one second to... Uh, where did my mouse... It's like I lose my mouse pointer every time. Okay, so let's get into, oh, hold on. I think what happened was I, um, where I, I had my monitor unhooked, I, I have to set that up like that. There we go. Okay, so, uh, so let's get right into uh, the sort of the, you know, what we're going to be uh, talking about. First off, logistics. Um, so it's the same story uh, as, as before which, um, you know, we had the exam uh, in next hour to submit the calculations. Again, the exam is designed to be 50 minutes long, but I'll give you an hour just for, you know, network issues and whatnot. The exam's going to be on Monday. So it, just so everybody's aware, we don't have class, or so everybody's clear, we don't have class on Friday. Friday's the spring holiday, so everybody's off. You all turned in a homework today. We're going to get that homework graded and get the solution posted hopefully by tomorrow. Uh, and then um, you all will have all the solutions and all the study material ready for the exam. Um, but the logistics are the same. It's no different. Um, it'll, it'll be on Monday. We have the exam. And then just so you're aware, um, barring, you know, locusts or, or any other uh, <laughs> plagues that we could experience, it's probably going to be regular homework and regular operation for the rest of the semester. Because, you know, we, because of the storm, we had some breaks where uh, I redid the lecture uh, schedule such that, um, you know, we had an intro to bolts and then we didn't have a homework that day. And then we had an intro to welds and we didn't have a homework that day. And I don't think that's going to be the case after the second exam. We're just going to, you know, operate regularly for the rest of the semester. So that's just something to be aware of. But we won't, that won't be the case until well into uh, uh, to next week. Um, same story as before, you know, it's a forced completion exam. So once you start, you got to complete it in one sitting. Uh, it's a timed exam and it auto submits and that's for your benefit so that it saves whatever results are there at the end if you haven't already submitted it and submits it for you. The questions are there all at once as opposed to one at a time. So you can see your responses before you submit. Uh, it's open book, and by open book, I mean the manual. You can use the notes, you can use the recordings, you can use the uh, PDFs, the homework solutions, all that, just not another person. And that means forums online, that means Chegg and all that, that means another classmate. It tends to steer you down the wrong path anyways. It's easier to just do the stuff uh, than it is to, to work out um, to work out the, uh, uh, you know, the, the meanderings of a forum. The other thing to keep in mind, and I didn't emphasize this at the beginning, but I'll go ahead now, um, this exam isn't worth as much. It's only worth, um, uh, it's only worth 15%. Uh, and the reason why is because there's not, there, there's the first exam had tension members, which was kind of a lot, especially when it's the first time you've learned how to design. That's kind of the whole point of tension members is it's not hard, um, you know, like at least from a theoretical basis it's just sigma equals p over a can you hear me now am i coming through now yeah i can hear you oh sorry i, I guess i cut out there for a second sorry about that um let me know if you have any uh, if there's any other connectivity issues uh, but but with tension members, there's there's a lot there because it's the first time that you design. But with bolts and welds, first off, the two topics I think go very well together because just of, of the philosophy of design. You know, you compute the capacity of a single bolt, then divide to get the number of bolts. You compute the capacity of a single inch of weld, divide to get the total number of inches of weld. It's it's kind of the same thing, um, and. In, it's also there's not a lot there. They're kind of easy. So the exa second exam is only worth fifteen percent. So you know you can really have some scatter there as to um, as to, to uh, 
uh, not some scatter, that's the wrong way. There's, there's not a lot to exam, so I, I didn't think it'd be wise to make it, make it worse so much. Um, the format's the same, you know, four to five conceptual questions, two to three computational. Again, type an answer out for every question. Okay, topics. These are the topics. This is it. Uh, bolted connections and welded connections. Make sure you can understand the fundamentals of bolt installation and bolt behavior. Make sure you can analyze and design bearing type connections and slip critical connections. For welds, make sure you understand the fundamentals of welding methods and weld behavior and that you can analyze and design fillet welds. That's, that's the exam. Uh, here's the bolted connection capacity. So I put bolt shear, bolt slip, and bolt bearing all on one slide. Remember for a bearing type connection, you have to uh, withstand bolt shear and bolt bearing, or sorry, for, for bolt bearing, you have to resist bolt shear and bolt bearing. For a slip critical connection, you have to resist bolt shear, bolt slip, and bolt bearing. So all three for slip critical, bolt shear and bolt bearing just for a bearing type, you ignore the, the slip. Um, the bolt bearing capacity is not, uh, check, it's not hard, there's just a little bit more involved because you gotta compute your hole diameter and then your LCE, your LCI, compute an RN for each edge bolt and interior bolt and then count them up and then all that. So it's not hard, it's just a little bit more involved. Um, the layout requirements, remember we have an S min and an S max. There is an S preferred as well. Um, I said it on the uh, homeworks and I'll say it on the exams. I'll tell you what to use. You're not, I'm not gonna uh, make you, you know, pre, you know, just guess, you know, you'll know which one you need to use. For edge distance requirements, uh, we either use the minimum uh, from that table uh, in the spec, J table J3.4, or the maximum. The maximum doesn't change. Um, it's either 12T or six inches. One other thing about the, um, uh, the, the maximum bolt spacing, we're using the minimum of 14T or seven inches. If you remember, the spec actually gives you two cases. We're using the one that's most conservative. So there's actually two options for S max, but we're only using one of them. Um, that ends up not being an issue during design lane anyways, since you, since you more often than not tend to space your bolts closer together, not further apart. Um, for the process for design of a bolted connection, we determine the factored load. We determine the capacity of a single bolt. For a bearing type connection, that's just the shear capacity. For a slip critical connection, that's the minimum of the shear and the slip capacities. And you just take the controlling one. Uh, then you compute the num required number of bolts and then you select a pattern, lay out that pattern according to the prescribed requirements. You typically, it's your minimum edge distance and either S min or S preferred. Uh, and finally, check your bolt bearing capacity. Uh, and iterate if necessary. And remember, we've talked about what it means to iterate. You can space those bolts out a little further. You can um, use another row. You know, there's 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 options there. Um, I, I can probably see this question coming, so I'll go ahead and say this. This exam is not going to be designed so that you need to iterate 100 times. That's, that's not the point. Um, once you've shown me you can do the calculations, I'm not terribly concerned about your ability to do them again and again and again and again on a timed exam. So, so don't worry about that. Welded or welded connections. Um, so we're talking about fillet welds here. We have the weld metal capacity and the base metal capacity. Um, weld metal, very plug and chug. All you need is your electrode strength, your weld length, and your uh, weld width or your weld size. Uh, base metal capacity is the minimum. Uh, well, all of this is the minimum, but uh, either uh, base metal shear yielding, base metal shear fracture, or the weld metal. Uh, but for base metal, we have two limit states, shear yielding and shear fracture. The fee value changes for these uh, limit states. We either have one or 0.75. We have to compute a gross area and shear and a net area and shear. But for fillet welds, we get a little bit of a perk because those two values equal one another because we're not removing from the plate material to fabricate the connection. It's not like a bolted connection where you're drilling a hole, it's just the plate. So gross or AGV equals A and V uh, for you know, the fillet welded connections we're gonna have to worry about on the exam. Limits, uh, and again, we have different reasons for those. Uh, the minimum weld size comes from the table. The maximum weld size is just uh, an expression that you see here. And then the design, the nice thing about well, designing a welded connection is that there's no iteration because your VRN that you compute, uh, the capacity of a single inch of weld is based on both the weld metal and the base metal capacities. It's not like that for a bolted connection. For a bolted connection, you're computing the capacity of the bolt, you lay out the connection and then compute the capacity of the plate. Um, because of the nature of the beast, you can't, you can't compute both. So with, with this, 
you're determining the capacity of a single inch based off both the connector and the base metal. So once you lay it out, you're done. There's no iteration necessary. Um, and you know, when we uh, choose the weld size, I have a little type, I guess a little typo here where it says weld size up to 5 16 of an inch. And I say more on this later. There is no more on this later on this slide. Uh, but really the, the reason that we choose up to 5 16 so first off we choose the larger weld size because larger weld size means shorter weld length. And the shorter the weld, the cheaper it is. So we want to deposit short welds, not long welds. And so if uh, all things being the same in terms of areas, uh, to deposit a shorter weld, we need a bigger weld. We need a, a larger weld size. So we want the weld size to be the maximum possible. And we always usually choose up to 5 16 because 5 16 is the largest that you can deposit in a single pass. Um, we determine the capacity of a single inch, divide to get the total number of inches. Remember when laying it out, we usually lay those out in a symmetric fashion. We talked a little bit last time about how you wouldn't lay it out symmetrically if you were doing something like a balanced weld. We're not going to worry about that on this exam. I just wanted to throw that out there uh, for, for, you know, comprehension's sake. Um, limit the weld lengths to the nearest inch. I mean, you could do it to the nearest half inch, but for this exam, just nearest inch. Uh, and either longitudinal welds or longitudinal and transverse welds. Never a transverse weld by itself. I'm done. 22 minutes. Floor is yours. Any questions you got, fire them off. Uh, Dr. Michelson. Yes, sir. On homework 3.4, we had to design a slip critical connection and and the process of, of that design, we mm -hmm. had to evaluate the bolt bearing, um, which we were only evaluating one case of bolt bearing. And in doing so, we have to get the thickness of mm -hmm. the connection that we're gonna use to evaluate that. And I'm pretty sure I got the thickness wrong. I included okay. the thickness of I included the thickness of uh, both L members and the three quarter inch plate in between them, mm -hmm. um, and I guess I'm just asking, uh, what is the correct thickness there? Okay, all right. So this is the solution to homework three point four. Everybody here has access to this on Blackboard, so I'm not showing anything you you can't see on your own. But uh, but th this would be a good thing to just review together. <laughs> uh, do this on, on GDQ or something. Um, so, uh, so right here, this is the connection. Now, um, the, the big thing to keep in mind whenever you do a bolt bearing check, and this, this is true of connections in general. This isn't, the, what I'm about to say isn't limited to bolt bearing. Um, but whenever you're doing a connection, there is the capacity of the connector itself, the connector either being like the shear capacity of a bolt or the weld metal capacity of a single inch of weld. There is the connector and then there is the connected material. So in this case, you know, when we're talking about a slip critical connection, there's the capacity of the bolt and then there's the capacity of the members. Whenever you have a connection, there, there you know, more often than not, there's two members, right? There's, you know, take, take a look at this. There's the angles transmitting load to the right and then there's the gusset plate transmitting load to the left right because imagine you know i'm grabbing this this angle and this plate i'm yanking on it like this right so i might have the angles in this hand and i might have that three quarter inch plate in this hand with me so far yes okay so if i'm so whenever you whenever you look at, at uh the connected material or in this case we're talking about a bolt bearing check you would look at each one separately so there's going to be a bolt bearing check for the angles and there's going to be a bolt bearing check for the plate now let's look at the parameters that go into each of those okay so first off both of the materials have the same uh, uh material qualities it's both i think for this one they were both a36 steel so there's no difference between the angles and the plate. Like it'd be different if the angles were A36 and then the plate was maybe A572 grade 50. In that instance, we've got a different FY and a different FU for each uh, uh, member. And so we might need to check both, okay? Now, to be clear, you could check both regardless. Like nothing's stopping you from doing a bolt bearing check on the angles and a bolt bearing check on the plates. But let's look at it from a parameter standpoint. Now. Here's the connection that, the, that we laid out. So if I look at this connection, both members, and by both members, I'm talking about all the angles on one side and the plate on the other. 
They have the same material properties. They have the same edge distance. They have the same bolt spacing. So what's different? The angles, all the members on in my right hand have a total thickness of two inches. The gusset plate only has a thickness of three quarters of an inch. So everything else being the same, if it's the same FU, if it's the same bolt spacing, if it's the same edge distance, but it's the, the only thing that changes is the, is the thickness. And if I've got to check these, why don't I just check the one that has the minimum thickness? And between two inches of steel this way and three quarter inches of steel this way, just check the one that's three quarters. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're only checking the three quarter inch plate because that's the thinnest? Yes. That's exactly right. I mean, the the here's the best way I could think of it, okay? Imagine that you were splicing together two ropes, right? Okay, so you had a rope and a rope and you were duct taping them together and you yank on it, okay? Well, there's two ways that could fail. The duct tape could fail or the ropes could snap in half, okay? So you might check how strong the duct tape is, but then you look at the ropes. If I got a two inch thick rope over here and a rope that's like half inch diameter, I know this rope is fine, you know what I mean? I know this one's way thicker than this one, so this one isn't gonna snap in half, it's gonna be the thinner rope. Does that make sense? Yeah, okay, I got you. And that, that's what's going on here because the angles, even if you just looked at one angle, like one angle has a thickness of one inch versus the, the plate that has a thickness of three quarters. Like, if you go to the second page, okay, every, so this is evaluating the bolt bearing of the gusset plate, okay? And I go through and say, okay, here's the thickness, here's the S, here's the LE, so here's the hole diameter, the LCE, the LCI, and go through, and I get a VRN of 511.4 kips, okay? That VRN of 511.4 is based on these parameters right here, or hold on, based on these parameters, okay? So those parameters are the parameters for the gusset plate. Now what about the angles? The S doesn't change, the LE doesn't change, the FU doesn't change. The only thing that changes is the thickness. And instead of three quarters, it's gonna be two. So think about what that's gonna to do to the end. For the for the angles, that number's just gonna be way bigger, you know? Because all these but, intermediate calcs are based off the thickness. But you know that the gusset plate would still govern regardless because it's thinner than the angles. Exactly, so no point in even doing the math, you know? This okay, just, and then my yeah, my only other question was just uh, asking if we could divide uh, the weld lengths up into half inches because I think that's what I did on the homework, but I wasn't sure if we needed to uh, get weld lengths to a full inch. I couldn't remember if you had said um, it or not. I I would so I'm gonna be kind of kind on th this homework assignment. I I the reason I said one inch is so so let me say this in practice. If I was a designer and I had to design a connection. Um, to me, the, um, the choice of whether or not to go with a half inch versus a full inch would just be the, the simplicity of the connection and how much that connection is going to get repeated. Like if this is a really critical connection in a building and there's only going to be a few of them or there's only going to be one of them, I might say, you know what, spec that out to a half inch because that's a unique one, so let's get it economical. But if this is going to be, you know, uh, uh, an end tab that's going to be on every beam in the building, like it might be easier to just spec it out to the nearest inch. It might be a little extra weld, but if somebody's having to deposit hundreds of these things, make it easy on them, right? So I, I was thinking, you know, for the purposes of you all in this class and on the exams and, and the homeworks, let's just spec it out to the nearest inch just to keep it simple. You know, if you round, if you get uh, calculate a weld length that's 10.26 inches, just go with 11, you know. A, a half inch of weld is not really the end of the day going to make a big difference per connection. Now, I, I granted, I get it if you know, you're know you taking that and you're adding it up uh, you know, a, a few hundred times. But um, for the, the fabricator and the welder on the ground in, the, in the, uh, the fabrication shop, keeping the dimensions simple makes the fabrication process simple. And so 
you know, having to deposit welds that are 11.5 inches long versus just deposit a 12 inch weld, it's a little easier. I'm just thinking about real life. So to, to fully answer your question, to make sure I'm not glossing over it, like for the example, just round up to the nearest inch, just for simplicity. Well, on the length of the weld, that's what I did. But in the actual orientation on the plate, I ended up with yeah. a 10 and a half inch long I, uh, I, longitudinal yeah. weld. I get what you're saying. So it was, I think it was like, like 29 inches or something like that. Uh, I, I don't remember. And then, so if you put a full, something like if you put a full um, uh, nine inch transverse weld, you ended up and you divided it in two, it ended up being 10 and a half. That's fine for that homework assignment. I'm not gonna make a big stink out of that. Um, I, I'll, let me say this. That's not the type of thing I want to create um, confusion about on the exam. And so I'm going to try and avoid that being a confusing issue. That, because at that point, it's like we're not, we're not talking about whether or not we understand design or understand the process. We're just getting into the level of minutial detail that to me is, is not important when it comes to the big picture. I don't want to confuse you that way on the exam. I'll confuse you in other ways. <laughs> I'm kidding. I couldn't help it. Now I, I don't. I don't want that to be an issue. Should, should I do this, Doctor Evil type thing? So did I did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, you did. That's all I got. Anything else? Floor is yours. We 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 got ten minutes, but but I will use every or eleven minutes. I will use every bit of it. I got no questions. Oh, um, so back to 3.4, if there were different parameters, do we evaluate separate? Um, let me say this. Yes, but there's also use a little bit of, of like common sense with it. Um, so for example, um, if I have, uh, let's say I have two plates of equal thickness, but one has a higher material strength, use the one with the lower material strength. Or what if I have you know, two members and this member is not only thinner, but of a weaker material. It's like, well, don't check the other one, even though two parameters are different and not one. You can use a little bit of common sense there. But if you have a plate like let's say you have a, an A3, uh, an A36 that's an inch thick and an A572 grade 50 that's three quarters. Yeah, that, in that case, I'd probably evaluate both um, because the values are too close that I'm not sure that, that I'm gonna be able to, to gut check that without going through and, and, and doing the math. Um, so you can, you can use some common sense uh, with your uh, with your checks and and I think that's especially true in design land because you're the one laying out the connection right um, you're the one uh, doing the detailing um, the other thing I, I'd keep in mind is you know I also want to tie this to the real world so let's let's say in the real world not only are you going to be detailing the the bolted connection but you're the one who's going to be selecting the members that are being connected anyways right you know, you're going to be selecting the angles and the gusset plate. So if you're the one who has control over that, then if you're the one who has control over that, then um, you're the one who can make sure that you don't have to deal with that confusion down the line anyways. You know, you know what I mean? Um, you can you can avoid the riddle before it even, uh, even um, uh, uh, shows up. Do I watch Top Gear? 
No, what? What a Top Gear. What's is is I know there's in there like a meme where the guy goes like, oh no. Anyways, that's a show about cars. Us, I checked. Yeah, I think it. Yeah. All right, and then and then there's that meme that like this is great, but I really like this, or something like that. I feel like I'd probably enjoy it. I just don't watch it. Man, I, I'm some of these jokes are going way over my head. <laughs> Fair enough. Nautical nonsense. That's like talking about l l last semester when SpongeBob was a meme in, in, in the chat. Should have seen the chat before you entered. Okay, maybe that. Maybe I missed something. Yeah, that's yeah, like, like when you okay okay because because <laughs> I when it sucks when when I log in um, I only see the chat you know from from the moment I log in it doesn't record the chat that happened prior so um, maybe I shouldn't have told you that because um, <laughs> like Doctor Mike sucks you know we didn't say that you have no evidence of it. <laughs> No. <laughs> Somebody's being a dark. <laughs> um, I was gonna say something. <laughs> we won't defame bridge heroes in here. Hey, all I gotta say is the necktie, man. The necktie. Don't don't uh, don't defame bridges to me. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Oh, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> going back to, 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 to Mr. Roman's question, I mean, um, you know, you can use a little bit of common sense in that count, but again, if you're in design land, um, you can try and avoid. Um, I, uh, I permissionally, uh, sure. I do have one just very, very quick. This has nothing to do with the review. I had a former student that um, has a, a, a relative who's who's taking, uh, I guess, a statistics course right now. If anybody is interested in doing like statistics tutoring, if you could send me an email uh, outside of class, I was going to mention that at the beginning. It sort of completely slipped my mind. Let me know, and uh, and I'll get you in touch with uh, uh, with with the you know relevant folks. Um, Sorry, I was random. I know, but uh, I wanted to say that while it was, while it was on my mind. Any other questions? I mean, I mean, you could leave if needed. I, I just want to make sure that that I, I'm I'm um, uh, that I, if there's any other questions that I'm not glossing over them because I know I joined late. But um, I don't want to join late and end early if there are also questions. Last call for questions. I'll, uh, Miss Kate, and I got your email. That was. That was a just mistake. I had the wrong Keaton. Uh, I was gonna send you an email on that. I it was that was just a mistake on my part. You're good. I sent. I, I didn't mean to send, send the invite to you. So. Um, we can. Uh, we can talk about that afterwards if you uh if you want to get on Teams right after this. You want me to call you on Teams? Yeah, yeah. Do you want me to call you on? I can call. I'll call you right after this. All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording because I think we're all good. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, with that, best of luck on the exam on Monday, and I will see you in class on Wednesday. That's all I've got, everybody.